FNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 5th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping we all do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we have mostly a sea of red. The Dow is up 21 points. The S&P is off 21 points. The Nasdaq 100 down 180, about 1 to 4 tenths percent, 1 and a half percent for the Russell, or 27 points. 80 points, 2 and a half percent for the semis out there. You've got gold off 3 bucks, silver down 13 cents, lights recruit off 25 pennies, natural gas up 2 cents. 30 year treasury printed out at 134.02. That is up 30 ticks. So, where do we want to begin? Let's begin by um, let's begin by taking apart the NQ out here. So let's move over to those charts. We'll go take a look at my eight panel screen out there. Just give me a moment. We'll get over there. You have the white background charts, upper left hand side. So yeah, at the eleven o'clock update, we did mention there's a new profile that's attempting to form. I believe the NQ's profile has formed has indeed formed. So right now we have price testing support, both the green oscillator and change line and the top of that profile. So the first number you want to jot down on your pad of paper today is going to be 1306295. 1306295. If price closes above that, well then likely the top of the profile held and the uh, green oscillator and change line. Now why is that important? Well the reason that, that is important would be taking a look at this chart here. This is our Texas two-step, so to speak. And on the Texas two-step chart, we can see that this is likely going to be day number three of a lower close. We have seen four consecutive days lower here since the run-up off of the uh, December lows out there. So this is suggesting we could see a bottom form today or tomorrow out there. So you really want to watch the top of that uh, profile and uh, see, uh, see, see where price closes at the end of the uh, day. If we take a look at what else is going on, uh, let's look at other areas of potential support. On the five-hour time frame chart, Roadsman to Indicator Top, 12,993 would be profile support. On a 240-minute chart, Roadsman to Indicator Top, 13,005, it's TD9 count breakout level. 12,941 uh, 12, is the TD9 count breakout level for the 120-minute time frame chart. On the lower panel here, all we have is a TD9 count bottom on a 15-minute chart. That suggests we should at least see a rally up into about the 13,105-ish area out there. So that's what we have going on when we take a look at the NQs. But we've got a caller on the line, and we've got call-ahead city. And so let's go out to John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Hello. Hello. I wanted to ask you about Comex Noel, GCM3, yeah, yeah. contract. Um, specific question, Steve. Do you, in your work, your indicators, your patterns, do you see any warning signs that a uh, short-term top is forming? And uh, by short-term top, 
I, uh, I mean a top that gives way to a pullback of some sort for more than a day. So, uh, so let's try to answer that question for John here. We're still on our white background charts. And so the very first thing that we would do to try to answer John's question is take a look at the daily time frame chart. And on a daily time frame chart, one, there's a large A to B equals CD to the upside. So we can all see that uh, that is in place out there. And that is still the pattern, by the way, that first objective of that A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, folks, would be in the 2157 level. Now, what price did yesterday was it closed above the top of its daily profile, John. So it took out resistance. There are no topping signals. Well, there's a topping signal, and that's Rhodes momentum indicator signal. However, that requires a bearish reversal candle in order to confirm a top. So just having a signal doesn't mean that that is a top at all. So the daily time frame chart says we're above profile, we are above a green oscillator and change line, and that this wants to run higher, and we've got that A to B equals CD to the upside that would take us into 2157. Now, when we start talking about shorter term, John's saying, hey, maybe just a pullback for a day. If we did get a pullback, what we would expect or anticipate based upon that daily chart is price to get down towards that 2013, 2008-ish area. The five-hour time frame chart at the moment, this panel, this chart here does not complete until the bar, I should say, does not complete till 2 p.m., does have a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But, John, what you'd be looking for here as some kind of signal on a five hour time frame chart would be a close below 20, let's call it 2027. It says 2028 right now on my screen. That's the green and sort of change line. If price were to close below that, John, that would at least be signaling to us that we could or should expect at least another day's worth of pullback. Where that might take us to, you know, that's always a, uh, we have to just walk. Uh, the patterns that unfold. Nothing to uh, signal a top on the two hour on the four hour chart. The two hour chart does have a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That says that price could get back to the 1995 level, but price has first got to close below that 2028 area. So I'd really focus, I think, on the five hour time frame chart, John, you know, because it's the largest time frame here that I monitor next to the daily with regard to some kind of uh, pullback that lasts for more than a day or so. But I don't see anything. What, what do you see? Are you seeing are you seeing anything? Uh, no, I am not. And that's my question to you. Steve, you you know me very well. Uh, I am notorious for insisting I have no clue what's going to happen in the next 24 to 48 hours in any market. Yes. Um, and all I do to uh, manage that uncertainty is to ensure when I take positions, I've got manageable risk. And then, of course, on core positions, be it long or short, uh, stick with them, give myself room, that sort of thing. So, um, um, the, uh, the only thing or one thing that does strike me just looking at your chart work, and I appreciate that, that five hour chart, um, uh, Perfect. parameters that you just shared. I'm looking back at that, that peak that occurred. I guess that was Monday, Sunday night, March 19th, Monday, uh, March 20th. Uh, we had that rally. It didn't hold it and reversed back kind of quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah. If we happen to come under your rose, excuse me, your oscillator on change line at that 2028 20, level on that five hour chart, if we start trading underneath that, yeah. we'll be under that March 20th high. And I'm always alert to potential failures on the short term, you know, to, sure, to help sure. navigate. You bet, you bet. Hey, John, always good to speak to you. Thanks so much for calling, and we'll talk to you later, I hope. Just hang on, folks. Thank we'll be you. right back. You bet. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Now, just to do a thorough analysis on uh, gold uh, uh, for John that had called in here and for each of you that are listening in. So there's an element that took place yesterday that uh, likely has an impact on the direction of gold, and that was the U.S. dollar index. The U.S. dollar index had formed a Gartley buy pattern on this trading day. That was February, uh, March the 23rd. That was a nice little hammer candle, and price closed below that yesterday. So we need another bullish reversal candle inside the U.S. dollar index in order to generate another buy the D-point pattern. That could unfold today. So that's why it's important, really, to try to be a little bit thorough here for John. And so if, in fact, it has bottomed, we would expect maybe that five-hour time frame uh, for at least price to get back to that oscillator and change line, but perhaps bust through it. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, here where I've got my trend lines, both the descending and rising trend line, as well as price hitting an area of support. It's a bullish structured area of support. This is for the U.S. dollar that we're looking at right now. And that's between 100.82 and 101.30. So I'd really watch the 100.82. John and anybody else listening, I would say a price close below that. That's going to suggest lower price as well. That should put some energy into uh, Goldilocks. Now, that we don't need to necessarily see the U.S. dollar index move higher for gold to move higher because of the uh, political uh, environment, quite frankly, that we're in. Forget about the economic environment. It's the political environment that's scaring the bejesus out of everybody. So if we take a look at so the so one thing to certainly be watching for is the U.S. dollar index. If we take a look at gold itself, we're also approaching an area that has been real significant resistance. Now, the very bottom right-hand panel is our uh, quarterly view. So you can see this takes us back to this consolidation pattern into the 2011 time frame. Also drawn, drawn in here is that measured move. If, in fact, gold were to close above, and yeah, no, you'd say close above where, what's the level that we use? Um, you know, good question. I probably would adjust these lines. I know I will adjust these lines. I'll, I'll redo that. Not now. But I would say a close above the 2177 level uh, probably then suggests that we have a consolidation breakout that takes up to around 2900. Remember, when you use these measured moves, the move is equal to or greater than the consolidation pattern. 
And you look at the monthly time frame chart, it's bullish as can be. Prices above profile levels, it's inside its prior swing points. That's the prior swing point back in August of 2020, as well as the one from March of 2022, as well as going back to the swing point from September of 2011. So it's trading into that. It doesn't have uh, anything in the way of resistance that I can identify out there. And that's why gold should head higher. But what we want to watch it do is when it bumps its head against this ceiling, is that it? And we have another retracement or do we really have a breakout that's underway? So I just wanted to make sure that we were thorough with regard to Goldilocks. Now let's go take a look at some of the requests that have come in. We'll switch panels here. We're going to take a look at TMO. And that's not too much information. That's TMO. And TMO is, Johnny, drum roll, please. TMO is Thermo Fisher Scientific. And the question came in from David H. David says, uh, does Thermo Fisher have a good chance of getting to the 609 to 615 area by April the 21st? You've got calls that expire then. So as we take a look at the daily time frame chart specifically, what we see here is we see price trading above profile, price trading above its green oscillator and change line on its way up to 586.34. Now you're asking about 609. I can give you 586.34. And the reason that price might stop there on a further rise is because that is its TD nine count breakdown area out there. So no topping patterns that are present on the daily time frame. So David, as we speak right now on Wednesday at 1122 in the morning, this does suggest to you and I that it does want to move higher. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, it's a consolidation with inside its profile levels. So it likely wants to get to 600.87. Well, we got that 586 area to be paying attention to. So I can get you to 586 to 600, which you wanted 609, not 600 even. That's about all I can get you with regard to what the charts are communicating to us. Now, price can do its own thing and absolutely get up there. If you look at the monthly time frame chart for Thermal Pressure Scientific, what you see at 600.05, that number, as you know, is going to change, is its uh, oscillator and change line. And that has held uh, several times over the past, uh, looks like, year and a half or so. So that's going to be a key area of resistance out there. So that should work pretty well, I would think, for your, your trade out there. Now, does it get there by April 21st? Uh, it really depends on what the market, I would think, is going to do. Are we just having your normal two- to three-day pullback like we looked at in the NQ? Um, and then if that is the case, and we're still in a bull market, and this market should run higher. This market should run higher into May. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, whether, what it should do and what it does do could be two different things, and that's why you and I will continue to pay attention to the technical patterns out there. There will fish your scientific on a 30-minute time frame, see what kind of signals. You got a Rosemont indicator signal, just simply took price back to support, which was its profile levels. Then there's a new profile that is forming. So you might want to watch 574.91 for a clue. That's the bottom. And 577.90, which is resistance as to which direction price might want to break when its 30-minute uh, consolidation is done. So hope that helps you out. Uh, David, thanks much for taking the time to write in and have a wonderful Wednesday. Next question in from the Tigers, that is from Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill wants to take a look at Tesla. So let's go take a look at Tesla. I don't recall if there was a question involved with that, Mr. Bill. Um, and I can't get back to, I can't easily get back to where you were where, where you were looking at. So my apology. But let's go. What the heck happened there? I thought I switched over to uh, Tesla. I didn't, apparently. So now let's do it. So here's Tesla. Here's what we know about Tesla. Tesla did this. I don't think this completed the A to B equals CD out here. So that would be, that's yeah, that, there's no way that that was completed. So what we've got with regard to Tesla, forget about patterns. I don't have a pattern here. Well, I don't have a, I don't have a let's say, a top or a bottom pattern on a daily time frame right now. As I take a look at these charts, what we do have, Mr. Bill, is we have price trading below its green oscillator and change line. We have price trading back inside its profile. And today, close of below 189.51. More likely than not, Tesla will go target the 171.22 to 178.54 level. On a weekly time frame, we are also trading with inside its profile. It's a bullish structured profile. And then, of course, it's only Wednesday. But if the center doesn't hold, which is 186.83, it says we get back to 176. So we've got basically two charts here that are telling us 176 area should be a pretty good place for support. And on a monthly time frame, the level would be about 165.67. That could act as support out there. But I'd be more focused on the daily and or the weekly time frame. From a 30 minute perspective with regard to Tesla, what do we have out here? We've got a, a wave seven top 
that has led to an A to B equals CD to the downside. So let's actually draw in. Now, this is going to be a uh, the retracement. Well, I don't know what the retracement is. Uh, let me just uh, – looks like it could have been about a 0.382 retracement. The reason why I, I mention that is because more likely than not, when you get a retracement like that, Mr. Bill, that would suggest we do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, which right now we're approaching the one-to-one -one area around 182 and a little bit of change out there, 182, 183. But more likely than not, this does a uh, an extension. But what you want to watch for on a 30-minute time frame, to the extent that you do, is a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, then that says that price should go target South Southern Change Line currently at about 188. But I'd have to say overall, uh, right now it looks like Tesla wants to pull back, give it another day of uh, pullback out there. I don't think that that would be unusual for Tesla. We've had two consecutive days to the downside, uh, third consecutive day, third to fourth consecutive day should be all that uh, we'd be looking at out there. So that's what I see, Mr. Bill, when we take a look at Tesla. Hope that helps you out. If there's some other information that you needed, please let me know, and I'll do my best to get back to you. When we get back from this break, we're going to take a look at Netflix for S&P, Moderna for ELO, and of course, folks, I would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take a look at, uh, oops, let me uh, change the screen here. We'll get back to that uh, question here. Um, uh, golf guy. Okay, sorry about that, folks. So let's go take a look at our next request out here. That next request was actually to take a look at Netflix. This is for S&P inside the Tiger's End. So S&P, what we know is that yesterday was bar number nine of a TD9 count, right at TD9 count breakdown resistance. I mean, how beautiful is that? 
349. So you've got a topping pattern. This uh, completes the pattern today. And what price should do is simply pull back to support. Now, the first level of support S&P you're watching is going to be the 330 area. That number is going to change up and down. It says 330.08 right now, 3307. So that 330 area. If price tests and rejects that area, that's your bullish signal. That would actually be the next potential buy point if you wanted to add to a position. Whereas, if price closes below that, and below that is around the 330 level, that would then signal price might pull back to the next level of support, and that's at 315.71. The way that you trade that, as price is pulling back to 330, is you'd want to go take a look at intraday charts out there. 15 minute, 30 minute, 65 minute. Remember, you want to have equal bars. So when you're looking at equities, don't do a 60 minute chart, do a 65 minute chart, do a 130 minute chart. You don't do 120, you get equally time frame bars which is really what you want. Otherwise, you're comparing apples to oranges when you look at volume and everything else, quite frankly. So here we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart for Netflix. We can see that this formed a Roachmint indicator top. It did it at 10 o'clock in the morning. This was yesterday. Price broke through the first level of TD9 count breakout support at 340.16. And now price has made its way back to the next breakout area of support. Funny how that works, isn't it? It's really pretty cool. 336.23 was the exact number. The actual low was 336.25. So price right now is at an important threshold level of support, S&P. And if we did see a 30-minute close below 336.23, well, that opens up the door for the next TD9 count breakout area down at 321.28. We're not there just yet, but you have the number to know what to watch for and to look at. But what you'd really want to do, let's just say that price is going to pull back over the uh, over the next day or two to test that oscillator and change line. You'd really want to see some kind of bottoming pattern out there. And yes, you can pull back to a breakout level of support. That can be a bottom, but I really prefer to see the bottoming pattern. An A to B equals CD, a TD9 count, Roadsmith to Mindicator, or just simply some other pattern uh, that one might trade out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Netflix. Uh, this is going to be day number two of its uh, pullback as we take a look at its Texas two-step out there. Most of the retracements are two to three bars. There are several four. There's a, some, if I see a four or six, and I do see a seven. But right now, we'll just assume that we've got this nice bullish move, that uh, the equity markets are likely to move higher through the uh, May time frame out here. And, uh, of course, we'll just simply take things one step at a time. So thanks so much for the request, SNP. Let's go on to ELO's question, who wants to take a look at Moderna. MRNA is the ticker symbol, trading out right now at about 152.64. As we take a look at this chart out here, um, what do we have? I don't have a topping pattern that I see, but I do see that price is pulled back inside its profile. And a close today below 154.72 will say that support has failed, or at least the first level of support. Was it really the first level of support? Yes, because there were two days of closes above, two consecutive days of closes above the top of that profile. So that suggests, now this is a bearish structured profile. This suggests if this is just a counter trend move to the downside in Moderna, it will find support at 151.02. If it doesn't find support there, well, then it'll go tag and test that 148.18 ish area, the red oscillator change under, even the bottom of the profile, 145.46. So right now, no bearish patterns in sight here from Moderna, but price is back inside its profile. It's bearish in structure. Price was above it for two days. That says if it's only a counter trend move, price should find support at about 151.02. On a weekly basis, we can see that price is struggling every time it gets up to that oscillator and change line. Now, when I say every time, there's really only been two times here since about the uh, February time frame. Uh, the first was on February 17th, and the second happens to be this week out there. So we know that that 155, 59, 156 area is a real key area of resistance resistance out there when we take a look at Moderna. If we take a look at its uh, dance steps out here, its stamp steps show that we are in day number two of a retracement. Last time we had a retracement was a two-bar retracement. The time before that was a two-bar retracement. And of course, the time before that one, that was a booger. That was a seven-bar retracement out there, which is kind of unusual, but obviously tells you about a sustained move lower. But we're just taking a look at what the normal dance steps are. So this suggests that you could see a bottom in Moderna between today and, let's say, well, tomorrow's Thursday. I'd say Friday, but obviously today and Monday. So hope that helps you out, ELO. If there's any other requests or any other questions that you have about those stock charts, just let me know. I'll be happy to get back to you. The next question coming in from The Golf Guy. And The Golf Guy is interested in taking a look at S. D -O -W. So let's punch those up on our screen out here. And SDOW is the short 
I believe that is the short uh, ETF for the uh, Dow out there. S short D-O-W, Dow. Yeah, Stevie is like a genius, isn't he? Uh, yeah, not so much. But if we do take a look at S-D-O-W and you're just looking for where price might find support, well, you'd look at the breakout level of 24.91 when we take a look at the daily time frame. But, you know, Stevie doesn't like to look at these two-time and three-time ETFs for what is really going on in the market. Instead, with regard to the Dow, I would say let's go take a look at the actual charts and see how the equity future contract is trading. Now, the first thing that I would suggest to you, golf guy, is that the Dow is not the place to go short. Why would Stevie say that? Actually, I'm going to switch panels here and so you'll be able to visually see exactly what it is that I'm sharing with you. And that is the following. Now, when you take a look at these four charts, what is that that you see that has taken place so far today in the ES, taken place so far today in the NQ, and the Russell 2000 that has not taken place inside the Dow, the Dow Equity Future contract? And you're exactly right. Each of those other threes are trading below yesterday's low. The Dow Equity Future contract has not even made it to yesterday's low. It's a subtle signal, but it's a really important signal, and it tells you about the strength there versus the weakness in the other three. Now, if you're considering going short, you really got to take into consideration these new profiles. Now, when you take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract right now, you can see that that new profile that is attempting to form is below price. And that golf guy, that is a bullish message. That doesn't mean if the market is topped here and it's ready to crater, so to speak, that we won't get down there. But right now, as we're taking a look at the technical indicators, that's a bullish message. The mere fact that the Dow is just having an inside day, that's a bullish message. The mere fact that it doesn't have a topping signal, well, that's another bullish message out here. So don't go short the Dow. If you're going to go short, I'd try to stick with, I guess, the Russell 2000. The NQ, and, and, and I'm not, and I'm suggesting don't go short today, not at least right now, not at 11:37. Now I'm, we'll go back. We'll take a look at some other charts out here, but right now the NQ is holding the top of that profile, and of the three new profiles that have formed out here, that's one that I'm telling you is solid. We don't need to wait till tonight to figure out whether that's a profile that's going to form or not. So, and that was also had formed when this formed yesterday. When it formed last night, I didn't see it because I've got family in town, so we're, you know, we're hanging out. Um, uh, is uh, uh, that uh, that's also a bullish signal, just like we're taking a look at inside of the Dow. Now, let me switch back to those white background charts. You've got a mind of your own. You're, I'm just suggesting what I see. You may see something different and just say, hey, I want to go short the Dow. So we take a look at the intraday charts out here just to look for any kind of signals. What do we have? Well, I don't have I've got a wave seven top on a five hour time frame chart with price consulting with inside its profile. What that tells me, Golf Guy, is 33,492 is a key level of support that must fail to even signal potentially taking a short position inside the Dow. We're gonna future contract. We come back, we'll finish. Take a look at the Dow and of course any other questions that pop up between now and then. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back up, folks. So we're taking a look at the Dow Equity Future contract during that break for the golf guy. I switched over to the NQ. There weren't any patterns in there. Uh, uh, weren't significant patterns inside the Dow Equity Future contract. And I kind of covered that and said, hey, don't short that. Short one of the other ones. Now, let's take a look at the NQ, which has been one of the weak links out here. When we came on the air, the only bottom pattern really that we saw out there was coming from the 15-minute time frame chart. But, and that's that's fine. Look, the 15-minute chart here, as we take a look at uh, 8.30 this morning, formed the TD9 count top. That led to this move down here, which was a TD9 count bottom. And now what we have is a new profile. So since we first took a look at this chart, we now have a new profile that is formed. So your resistance level is 13068. That being said, I still would expect at least price to spike its red oscillator and change line right about the 13080-ish level. I say 13, I'd watch 13083.75. Not to be granular or exact, but if if price is going to, if this, if we're going to see a further rally, and if this is just a little counter trend move intraday, 13.083.75 is where price should find resistance and then resume its way lower. 13.083.75 is the apogee pivot point um, out there. I'm not showing that on a different chart out there, and just wanted to make sure that I provided you with that data and that uh, number out there. So that's pretty much all that I see with regard to going short the NQ. You'd really need to see it close below 13.005. Uh, what is or at the low of today at least and negate that uh, TD9 count bottom is 13.019. So I'd, I'd go 13.05. That's the breakout level on the uh, four-hour time frame chart for the NQ that is out there. So I believe we have been through all of the questions, which is a darn shame because I wanted to do more time here on the show. Oh, we are going to do more time. Hey, if, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Oh, I know we need to do natural gas. I see. Yeah, I'm going to change charts for this one. Uh, so let's change charts. I'm going to look at two things. But first, I'm going to go to natural gas, not this New York Stock Exchange chart. Let's go back to that um, market update chart. Let me just expand out the March contract. Now, we're looking at the daily time frame here for natural gas. So we've spent a little bit of time this morning discussing the bullish and bearish uh, TAS market profile levels out there. And uh, what natural gas has done, and, and where this really comes in hand, well, it comes in handy in many different ways. But when you have closed below the bottom of bullish structured profile for at least two consecutive sessions, and natural gas did that. It did it on Monday, and it did it on Tuesday. And that says, okay, it's met that requirement. 
if this is just a counter trend move and we don't know whether it is or not, day is not over. It's only 1145. But if this is just a counter trend move in natural gas, where it finds resistance is the center line. Two dollars and 19 cents. Today's high, 2.197. So that is a very key resistance level for us to continue to watch. If price can get above that, doesn't mean we're off to the races. What it does mean, though, is you're off at least to the next race. That would get you up at resistance at $2.34 out there. So that's pretty much, I think, all that I really wanted to share with you with regard to uh, natural gas out there. you got to watch that uh, $2.19 area for some clues out there. Uh, Dan, inside the Tigris Den, uh, Green Elk, uh, I want to take a look at SMCI. So, uh, well, I'm going to say I will do, we'll do that momentarily, Dan. I'll just come over here to the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator screen again. Remember, the Advanced Decline Oscillator tells us, helps us when uh, price gets into an overbought or oversold condition for the general markets. Once you get above the plus 150 line, that center line that you're taking, or the center, uh, the, the second panel that you're looking at on my chart here, which it did, it got above plus 150. That tells us we are in overbought condition. That condition is clearly being worked off. A two to day, a two to three day pullback is a normal occurrence out there. And uh, quite frankly, the New York Stock Exchange is still in bullish territory. It's still above the zero threshold level out there. Uh, so I just wanted to also share that with you. Now let's go and take a look at uh, the request. Um, the request was from Dan. He wanted to take a look at SMCI. So let's go ahead and get those charts here fired. Oops, SMCI. Let's get rid of the O there because that's not going to help. And SMCI. Dan says... Steve-O, just a question mark. So we've got an, this instrument here is trading at 107.26. It says 107.12 on my screen, but it's not correct. I, some of these instruments, I'm just getting some slow data feeds. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter. What is trading below is the green oscillator and change line and within inside its profile. And that's really just consolidating with inside the area of 102.81, Dan, up to 118.36. It's a green oscillator and change line that it's trading below. It doesn't guarantee that we would get down to 102.81, but that could or should be its target, the bottom of that profile. If I look at the weekly time frame chart out here, no topping pattern, at least not just yet, but if this week, that would mean tomorrow we do end up with a bearish shooting star candle. Then you would get a confirmed weekly Rhodesman indicator top. Now, the signal, quite frankly, Dan, would be neutral. Neutral because, what are you saying, Stevie, you got a top? And now you're just saying neutral? You're confusing me. I'm, I'm trying not to confuse you. The reason why I say neutral is because price is trading above resistance. The resistance of the top of its profile and above a green oscillator and change line. And those are just simply all out bullish conditions. And you've got a top. So the only real call that I can make is a neutral signal. We take a look at the monthly time frame. The monthly time frame tells us that on a monthly basis, if we were to get a bearish reversal candle, then we would go ahead and have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's only April 5th. And even though it shows up as a shooting star, it ain't a shooting star. We got a long way to go. And what took place last month is price closed above its TD9 count top. And that suggests a strong upward momentum move in the stock. What do these guys do here, Dano? Super microcomputer. So what should you do, folks, out here with regard to this instrument? Well, you got that daily consolidation that's going on. Let's look at a 30-minute chart out here. I know Dan likes the uh, intraday charts. If we take a look at the 30-minute chart, what we have out here is a TD nine count bottom that is likely to uh, form at, 11, at, at 12 noon. Um, so that'll be a bar number nine is most certainly going to complete out there. This suggests that at least on a 30 minute basis, Dan, we ought to see price move up to 108.39, 109.28, or maybe 110.17 out there. So good looking uh, stock chart out here at the moment, just a consolidation on the daily time frame. With regard to its dance steps, this looks like this is going to be day number two of a uh, pullback here. And they typically last two to three days. Most certainly that's what it's done since it's made the uh, low back in the uh, uh, first of uh, February. So hope that provided you with the information you're looking for. If you need anything else, just ping me and I'll be happy to get that for you. The next request out here is from a guppy. Let's take a look at uh, one of his favorite stocks, BBAI. So let's go take a look at it. Your thoughts on BBA, it is pulled back to both the 200 and 21 day simple moving average. Is this a buy? So you've got those levels. I'm not going to put those up on my charts out here. If we took a look at the daily time frame, this top with the TD9 count top, it says I want to then pull back to support. Well, it uh, tested the level of support yesterday, which was the top of the profile and held today that failed. That moved it down to the red oscillator and change line. You really, McGuppy, need to know where the end of day chart 
um, is going to uh, print the end of day chart because the price closed below that red oscillator and change line. That's a 218. Uh, uh, let me just see. We probably don't even have a accurate uh, price right now. We're at 217. Okay. So we're just below that red oscillator and change line, McGuppy. And if you do close below that, which is about 218, 217, price should move back to the other area of support. Now, what's not showing on this chart is the new profile that's attempting to form. So I'm going to go ahead and switch screens for you just so you can see it. Maybe you grab a picture of the screen inside the Tiger's Den. I don't know. But here, what you'll see is the bottom of that profile is at a buck 98. That's the level that you want to continue to observe. If price were to close below that, uh, then we're likely going to go head back and test those lows from March 20th. But that's your area of support, a buck 98. Hope that helps you out, and thanks so much for the request. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Back up, folks. So the last question coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent uh, trading the uh, five-minute chart here for the Russell 2000. And uh, just asking, uh, you know, what, what I see here in any of the other charts. So uh, Brent had taken an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern on the five-minute time frame chart. Then it was also confirming a road momentum indicator uh, bottom and did that at about 11.10 uh, this morning. And now you've got price that is just simply trading with inside its profile. Now, I have an A to B equals CD that it likely completed also to the upside on the five-minute time frame. The retracement here 
uh, at 11.30 was about 83%. I don't like it to get much beyond 0.786 out here. So it doesn't really matter at this stage. Right now, price is back inside its profile. And so you've got resistance around 17.58 and support in the 17.54, 17.55-ish area out there. But, of course, you get a close blow yesterday or, or this morning's low. You know, this is likely headed lower. With, the other, with regard to other time frames, I've got a uh, bar number eight that's forming on a 240-minute chart. That bar doesn't complete till 2, so we won't have any kind of TD9 count bottom till early this evening. I don't have – I've got the 15-minute Roachman Dominicator bottom pattern, price struggling at its oscillator and change line. And really, it has, it's still below the bottom of its daily profile, which is 1762. So an area to note as well. Um, I'm just not getting a lot of confirmation of a bottom pattern here, Brent, on any of the other time frames. When I say any other time frames, I do have one on the 15. I don't have one on the 10. I don't want to have one on the 30. I don't have one on the 60. I don't have one on the 120 minute chart out there. So uh, I hope that that helps you out. But pay attention. You're training with the uh, you're, you're, you're sticking with the five minute charts out there. You know these patterns work on uh, on that as well. But just stick with the consolidation that it's in as we speak. So I do hope that that helps you out. Uh, there was a request that I was covering earlier. And it was BBAI, and I was talking about uh, one set of charts, and I was on another. Anyways, I just want to make, you know, we, I, I know that we covered it, but I just want to go ahead and populate the uh, the white background charts here because it does show where price is pulling back, testing that red oscillator and change line in that 218 area. And that's one of the levels that uh, uh, is suggested that you pay attention to. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me today. we got great programming lined up. Think or Swim is up next. I'll be back with you tomorrow at the normal time, 11 o'clock, for our last training session of the week. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Take care now.